In the frozen trenches of World War I, where soldiers lived knee-deep in mud and shivered through nights colder than steel, survival wasn't measured in battles won. It was measured in how long you could stay warm, and the difference wasn't a new rifle or a piece of armor. It was a stove, a small, collapsible miracle that turned scraps and soot into heat, tea, and life itself. By the winter of 1915, the Western Front had become a frozen graveyard of progress. Trenches stretched for hundreds of miles, filled with men who hadn't seen dry ground for weeks. Water pooled at their feet, rats gnawed at supplies, and every night, frost crept deeper into the mud walls. Fire was a luxury. A single wisp of smoke could draw enemy shells, and most of the wood was soaked beyond use. Yet, without warmth, men froze where they sat. So soldiers improvised, turning the war's waste into tools of survival. At first, they used tins, shell casings, or even broken helmets to hold small flames. But it wasn't enough. Then came the idea that would quietly outlive the war itself. The trench stove. It was simple, efficient, and built from nothing more than ration tins and an understanding of airflow. It burned hotter, longer, and cleaner than open fires, all while staying nearly smokeless. It wasn't a weapon, but it may have saved more lives than any weapon could. Most campfires waste more heat than they give. Flames roar, air escapes, and fuel disappears. But soldiers learned if you could control that airflow, you could make fires smarter, not bigger. They fed oxygen from the bottom, drew flames upward through a narrow burn chamber, and used the chimney effect to recycle heat. In simple terms, cold air in, hot air out, steady draft. That tiny principle turned empty cans into efficient survival heaters. One of the best known was the Tommy Cooker, issued to British troops. It used solid alcohol tablets and a folding frame to boil water fast. Not perfect, but portable. When supplies ran out, soldiers built their own versions. They punched holes in ration tins, stuffing them with wax, twigs, paper, even bacon grease. Across no man's land, German troops built Esbit stoves using compressed fuel tablets, a design so good it's still standard in NATO packs. The French made paraffin burners, small enough to hide under a helmet. Different armies, same idea. A small, hot, smokeless fire. The difference between cold rations and a warm meal. Imagine it. Dawn breaks gray over a flooded trench. Frost clings to rifles. Somewhere, under a tarp, a corporal lights a small tin. Within minutes, steam curls from his mess tin. Tea, maybe soup. Around him, the smell of damp uniforms, rust, and human exhaustion fades just for a moment. That small glow, that's hope. That's what the trench stove meant. For many, it was the only warmth they'd feel between bombardments. Some soldiers even wrote home about it, describing how, for a few stolen minutes, the world felt human again. The real brilliance wasn't the materials, it was resourcefulness. These makeshift stoves worked on physics older than industry itself. By concentrating airflow and creating a draft, they burned almost anything. Paraffin, cardboard, oil-soaked rags, even rifle cartridges filled with wax. Some soldiers took it further, building double-walled stoves where air circulated between two tin layers, making them hotter and cleaner. Modern engineers later rediscovered this as the rocket stove, one of the most fuel-efficient designs ever made. The secret was balance, enough oxygen to keep fuel burning, but not so much that heat escaped. The narrow chimney funneled energy straight up, focusing it beneath a pot or tin. Unlike gas stoves, there were no moving parts, no pressure valves, just clever geometry. Even today, tests show that a well-built tin stove can reach over 500 degrees Celsius, enough to boil water, cook food, or dry wet boots 
using less than a handful of twigs. The low smoke output wasn't just practical, it was tactical. British snipers and signalers could warm rations at night without drawing enemy fire. The small flame barely flickered above trench height. Many soldiers claimed it was the only reason they survived long enough to fight again the next day. To them, the trench stove wasn't just metal. It was a lifeline. You can still make one. Take two cans, one slightly smaller. Punch holes at the bottom of the outer can for air intake and a few at the top for exhaust. Place the smaller can inside as a burn chamber. Pack it with twigs, wax, sawdust, or even cotton balls soaked in cooking oil. Light from the base, and you'll see it. The same perfect draft soldiers once relied on. A hot, focused flame that burns bright with almost no smoke. You've just recreated century-old field engineering with trash. After the war, trench stoves vanished as mass-produced gas and kerosene stoves took over. But their principle never died. Every rocket stove, Esbit stove, or hobo stove used by hikers and preppers today owes its design to those muddy trenches. Because the real lesson wasn't just about fire. It was about understanding your environment. Fire control, not firepower. Efficiency over excess. That's what kept men alive when technology failed. What made it remarkable wasn't the tin or the flame. It was human ingenuity under pressure. In a world stripped of comfort, soldiers turned junk into warmth. They proved that knowledge, not equipment, is the ultimate survival tool. It's the same mindset that drives explorers, engineers, and survivalists today. The ability to look at what's around you and say, I can make this work. So, when you next light a camping stove or tinker with survival gear, remember, you're using a design born in the mud of the Great War. The trench stove may have faded into history, but its spirit still burns wherever resourcefulness meets necessity. Because human creativity, like fire, shines brightest when the world goes dark. So, when you next light a camping stove or tinker with survival gear, remember, you're using a design born in the mud of the Great War. The trench stove may have faded into history, but its spirit still burns wherever resourcefulness meets necessity. Because human creativity, like fire, shines brightest when the world goes dark. If you enjoyed video, please like it and share it to your friends and family. Subscribe to my channel, Forgotten Survival.